This episode of Analog Resurgence is brought to you by Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description or the code Analog Resurgence will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Well, here it is. Something that I vaguely promised to look at ever since the dawn of this channel. The Movie Maker Pro Film Scanner by Wolverine. The Wolverine can scan Super 8 or regular 8 millimeter rolls of developed motion picture film at home, which sounds great. Maybe too great? Much like the Scanza and the Slide and Scan for Photofilm, I've looked at some of these easy home scanning units before and always with very mixed results. But this makes the big promise of transferring movie film, a much different beast from scanning stills. So let's see what the Wolverine can do. I have the Pro model of the Wolverine, which is very similar to the basic model, but it has some important differences. The Pro will scan in 1080 resolution and can take reels of up to nine inches in size. The regular model only scans in 720 resolution and will only take smaller reels of either three or five inches. I'm only gonna be looking at the Pro because it's the one that I bought. And what am I gonna do? Buy another one that's worse than this one? Get out of here. So how does it work exactly? The Wolverine takes her developed rows of eight millimeter or Super 8 film on the left side of the unit. The film is threaded through the film path under some plastic guides and past the scanning area onto an empty take-up reel on the right. The unit has a small screen with a handful of options that I'll go through in a moment, an SD card slot on the back, along with plugs for the power, USB, and TV. With film loaded, you can begin capturing and it will slowly advance the film, capturing it with a little camera and saving an MP4 video file onto the SD card. So you can turn those reels of developed film into digital video. An important thing to note, even though it's probably obvious to others, but not to everybody, is that your film still needs to be chemically developed after it's shot in the camera. You can't just take the film out of the camera and immediately start scanning it because that will destroy the film. It needs to go through developing chemicals and a unit like this does not replace processing. It's only scanning that is done after the film is developed. But surely scanning this small motion picture format involves high quality components in order to get good looking results, right? Yes, yes it does. But the Wolverine tries anyways. I bought my scanner used, so a couple of my pieces are a bit different from what you'll get if you pick it up new, but the unit itself is the same. In the box, you get an empty take-up reel, which I've just grabbed from a projector that I have, the scanner, a couple of reel adapters, which I don't have, but also salvage from an old projector, the power cable, USB cable, TV out RCA cable, which I also don't have, and a manual. Plug this thing in, turn it on, and behold, a very small screen that should probably be twice as big for it to be of any particular use. Like it works, it's just very small. You could plug this thing into a TV or a monitor with the RCA cable, but that will only give you a bigger version of this low quality display, but bigger at least. Also, it's necessary to have an SD card inserted or else the Wolverine won't get past this screen, even if you plug in a USB cable because the USB function only acts as a way of reading the SD card in the unit. No SD card, no scanning. The menu options for this are as follows. Record will start the film movement and begin saving to the SD card. Playback allows for you to watch scans you've already made on the SD card. Rewind will turn on the motor and you use it to rewind the film back onto the original reel. Exposure allows for a bit of control over your image. Sharpness would digitally enhance the sharpness of your scan, making things look worse. USB allows you to transfer files from the SD card to a computer. Frame adjust lets you change the framing of your scan area. Film type gives you the option of choosing between positive or negative film. And then there's also options to change the language, format your SD card, reset everything to default, and check the firmware version, which seems unnecessary as you can't update the Wolverine's firmware. So the unit has some level of control, which is good, but let's scan some film and then I'll talk about the results that you actually get with this thing. I'm gonna start with reversal film or positive film as it's sometimes called, which is definitely where the Wolverine works the best. This is some black and white reversal Tri-X Super 8 film that I shot a couple of months ago. And I also have an HD scan of it from Niagara Custom Lab, which I can compare it to. The full reel gets mounted on the left side and there's a solid line to indicate the film path through the scanner. The dotted guide is meant for if you're rewinding. It goes around these plastic rollers, except they're not rollers, they're stationary and the film is simply dragged over them, which makes me vaguely uncomfortable. You thread it under this gate area that flips up and you have to put the film beneath some little guides, which can be a little bit fiddly, and make sure that this little pin pokes through your sprocket. When you start, the pin moves and advances the film. Close the gate and then that's it. 
Just thread it onto your empty take up reel and you're good to go. I can do a bit of an overscan if I go all the way out using the frame adjust option, which can be useful for later if I want to crop or stabilize the scan. Or for that sexy film perforation on the side. How else are people going to know that you shot film if you don't show it? The exposure control might be useful if there were any way to preview it, but there isn't. You just pick a number and then you can't see how it looks until you're actually scanning. So you might get to a point in the film where the exposure is too bright or dark and you have to stop and change the settings. Being able to preview this would be really useful. Same goes for sharpness, I guess, but really the sharpness option makes things look worse regardless. It's like dragging a sharpness slider up in Photoshop or Lightroom. It just brings out the low quality aspects of the capture device and tries to create the illusion of sharper grain. I recommend just leaving it on low or maybe medium if you've got a couple drinks in you and you're feeling crazy. With the recording started, there's nothing left to do but wait. Oh, and wait you will. The Wolverine moves pretty slow, so it will take a long time to get through a lot of film especially. For this roll of Super 8, which is 50 feet of film, it took roughly 35 minutes to capture it. That amount of film is about three and a half minutes long, so not a speedy transfer. Once you're done, you can take the file off the SD card, and there you have a digital copy of your film. The Wolverine gives you an MP4 video file with an H.264 codec, which ultimately just means that it is a compressed video file. So you aren't gonna get some sort of high quality raw scan with this, which you shouldn't be expecting based on the cost of this unit and everything that's involved in scanning motion picture film. There are no other options for the recording quality with the Wolverine, so this is what you're gonna get. It has a resolution of 1440 by 1080 if you're scanning with the Pro version and has a frame rate of 20 frames per second. Most Super 8 film is shot at a standard frame rate of 18 frames per second and regular 8mm is a standard frame rate of 16 frames per second. But the Wolverine gives you a video file that is 20 frames per second, uh, which is odd. You probably won't notice much of like a speed issue on the playback of your scans, but you can always adjust it later on in something like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or iMovie, whatever you got. As for the scan quality itself, it's passable. Unless your standards are too high going into using this, in which case it's, it's pretty bad. You aren't going to get a super sharp detailed scan using this unit because the internals are probably relatively cheap components. It's also just pretty unsteady. The film is held in place only with this pin in the gate cover. So there's a good amount of movement between frames. So things kind of, Float. And the reason I overscan is to allow for extra space so that I can stabilize things later in DaVinci Resolve. Doing a bit of extra work with your scan afterwards can help to improve things, but not everyone interested in this unit might have that kind of skill level or really want to do extra work. It's worth mentioning that DaVinci Resolve is a very robust, sometimes very complex video editing program, but it's also free, so it might be worth looking into. When you get a scan done at a lab that's using higher quality motion picture film scanners, you'll have a result which is much steadier and has a much sharper focus, especially on the grain. Again, the Wolverine does try to fake things a bit by giving you just that sharpness control option with your scan. If we compare this scan of Tri-X on the Wolverine with just a basic scan from Niagara Custom Lab, then we see a big, Big difference. And again, here, if we compare this Ektachrome on the Wolverine to this scan from the lab, it's very obvious how big the step up in quality really is. But that's also a different ballpark because things get expensive fast when you take film to a lab or a transfer house. It might cost you anywhere from 10 to $50 per 50 feet of Super 8 film to get a scan. That's a very rough estimate, by the way. So if you have a ton of old home movies that you want transferred to digital, it's going to be way more than just paying a few hundred dollars for the Wolverine at once. It's worth knowing the quality difference, but it's also not fair to expect lab quality scans from a unit like this. This is a random roll of regular eight millimeter Kodachrome that I picked up just for a scanning example. Switching from Super 8 to eight millimeter is done with this switch at the bottom and it adjusts the framing for you. The experience is really the same as just doing Super 8 like I did with the Tri-X. I didn't touch any exposure because for the most part with reversal film, what you see is what you get. And trying to up the brightness doesn't necessarily equate to achieving more information. I do think this is where the Wolverine does its best work as a just okay way of transferring old home movies and reversal stuff so that they can be watched again without running them through a projector. The quality leaves a lot to be desired, but it works. And especially for an older audience that doesn't want to deal with a ton of editing necessarily, 
and especially complex controls, then it might be fine. You can also just use this to kind of preview things, especially if you have a lot of film. And then later on, you can be more selective about which roles you would want a higher quality transfer of and that you would have to pay for. But now for the Wolverine's weaknesses. There's an option here in the settings for handling color negative film. This is some Vision 3 color negative stuff from the last few years that I've shot, and setting the unit to negative for scanning gives me some incredibly poor results in terms of the colors. It's dark, it's very green or blue, and it's just not an accurate representation of how good this film looks at all. Compare this again with a scan from Niagara Custom Lab who uses a Film Fabrique scanner and just look at the massive change in color and quality. Or even if we really wanna step things up and compare this Wolverine scan with this scan from Pro 8 Millimeter who uses a laser graphics scan station. Incredible difference in like every aspect of the image. It's also worth noting that it really didn't make much of a difference for me if I was scanning in a room with the lights on or if I was scanning in a room with the lights off. Bad color, all around, ugh, gross. The Wolverine just does a very poor job of handling color negative film. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that this thing is entirely automatic for its white balance. It's doing its best when trying to invert the negative, but the results are truly awful when you compare them with what a lab can give you. The auto white balance is also a problem if you wanna try and scan it using the positive option to have the negative image itself for manually inverting. The base color doesn't stay consistent enough for you to invert it properly. See in this scan, it changes between orange, yellow, white, blue. You can't easily work with this to invert it using color correction yourself. The Wolverine also does not capture sound. A lot of Super 8 and 8 millimeter film does not have a soundtrack on it, but there are lots of older films out there that might have magnetic audio on them or even an optical soundtrack. But the Wolverine has no way of capturing sound off of film if your film has sound. I say if you're hoping to use this as an alternative to having a lab scan your Vision 3 color negative stocks, then you're definitely gonna be disappointed. Stick to things like Tri-X and Ektachrome or old home movies on stocks like Kodachrome and you might give it a pass. Besides that, it feels super cheaply made. These things that should be actual rollers, but aren't, this gate's a little rough, the fact that it only has this one pin for advance, it's not great, and there's definitely potential for film to get scratched as it goes through this unit. The take-up motor is also one of the most common problems with these units. If you do a little bit of research online, you'll find quite a few people have problems with it not turning properly and the cheap components in the back just wearing down. The rewind function is also slow and I lost patience for that pretty quickly. So I would just move reels over to a projector so that I could rewind them faster. I also recommend using like a microfiber cloth in order to clean your film before scanning it because there's no real brush or anything on the unit in order to clean dirty film. Also just a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol goes a long way in making sure that that little light source is clean because that can impact your image as well. There's a couple of small pieces of felt around the scan area, but these seem to have a pretty minimal impact on things. The Pro costs about $400 American, which is on like the cheaper side of things considering what it aims to do, but it's still a decent chunk of change for people. And for some of those picking it up, I think they're gonna be pretty disappointed. Working with motion picture film is expensive and it's hard to cut corners without drastically sacrificing quality. I think that this unit is best aimed at people who are transferring old home movies as opposed to people who are currently shooting film and looking for an alternative to paying for lab scans. Really, I think that the unit shouldn't even offer a color negative option because the results are so poor. Super 8 color negative stocks are also a somewhat recent addition to this format. They weren't really available until the 1990s and into the early 2000s, which means that if you have a lot of old home movies, it's very, very likely they're all reversal films like Kodachrome or Ektachrome or any like non-Kodak stuff from like the 70s and the 80s. Scanning motion picture film is difficult. Capturing hundreds if not thousands of these little images while also achieving consistent positioning of those frames in order to have a good looking final product isn't something that you can just kind of throw together. But technically, yes, the Wolverine does do it more or less. But here's the thing. What other options are there for scanning without going to a lab for formats like 8mm, Super 8, and even 16mm? Well, the Wolverine is one of the very few choices under several thousand dollars that you can just buy. The other is the Kodak Reels. 
a bit of a dumb name, but it's maybe a bit better than the Wolverine. It's just been released within the past year. I don't know a ton about it. It's got a slightly bigger screen, so that's something, but there's probably about the same quality. There's also lots of knockoff scam units of the Wolverine. There are tons of sketchy websites out there that claim to sell something that looks just like this, usually the basic model, for super cheap. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't. It's a scam. You can't get this thing for like $35. Or there's the Magnasonic, which looks the same as the basic Wolverine model. I can't imagine the basic 720 resolution unit is great, but I'd assume there's at least not much difference between the Magnasonic version and the Wolverine. If not this, then if you have the skills and the time, you could build a scanner yourself. And it's not something that I've done, mainly because there's a lot of different ways to do it, and it can be very tricky in order to get good looking results. But there are a lot of resources online for projects like that, and I will link to a few below. These are setups that advance the film slowly, usually with a microcomputer for frame by frame capture using like a DSLR or something similar, and then you can compile it into a video file afterwards. You might also just be able to modify one of these units into some sort of Frankenstein-esque affront to God in order to achieve better scans. I also haven't done that, but I've seen a couple of mentions about people who have, so you know what? I'll link to those below as well. And there's really no cheap-ish device that you can just go and buy in order to scan 16 millimeter film yourself at home. And really, I should at least say that if you have 16 millimeter, then try to take it somewhere nice to get it scanned and transferred properly because that format can look so good if it's done properly. Even really old 16 millimeter, it doesn't matter. It's a great format with a lot of information on those frames. Similar to making a frame by frame scanner, you can explore creating a telecine device. A telecine usually involves projecting the film into a capture device such as a digital camera instead of a slow frame by frame capture. For example, this is the telecine suite at Lyft, which is an artist run center here in Toronto and stands for the liaison of independent filmmakers of Toronto. Little bit biased because I do work with them, but you can rent this if you're a member at Lyft. And it uses mirrors to project into a 4K Blackmagic cinema camera. Even a setup like this on a smaller scale can give you some really good results for transferring if you're ready to just kind of do it yourself. I believe really the next device up from the Wolverine that you can actually buy would be a movie stuff retro scan. But those are like $8,000. The Mark I used to be a little bit cheaper, but I don't think is made anymore. And the Mark II is crazy expensive for just an individual to go out and purchase. So for many people out there, the Wolverine it is, or the Kodak Rios, but again, probably not a very big difference. The Wolverine gets a sure why not from me if we're talking about transferring reversal films and just old home movies that you just wanna watch with family again, and a nope, I'll pass if we're talking about using it to scan a lot of color negative stocks. Big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video today. Skillshare is a massive online learning community that offers courses covering an absolutely insane variety of topics in order for you to learn, explore, and dive deeper into your own creativity. Whenever I'm working with film scans here on the channel of Super 8 and 16, I use DaVinci Resolve for my own color grading, a program that is incredible, but complex. Through courses on Skillshare like Adam Schraby's Color Grading Crash Course in DaVinci Resolve, these skills and programs become so much more accessible for you to use yourself. Skillshare has no ads and is always dropping hot, hot, hot new courses for you to check out. So honestly, instead of uh, wasting your time in film school like I did, check out Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description of this video or my code Analog Resurgence will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks so much for checking this out. Buy it or don't, I don't know. Really depends on what you're expecting with this thing. I do wanna mention a few scanning resources that I know these are North American based because I am in Canada. There are ones all across the world. So share places where you get film scanned and get good results from down below in the comments. But you can check out Niagara Custom Lab, Frame Discrete, Pro 8 millimeter, Nicholas Coyle scans, and the Film Photography Project for some quality scanning, and I'll throw those websites down below as well. There's also links down below for ways to support the channel if you're interested. There's a Patreon, there's also a little bit of merch that I have available, and there's a PO Box address for if you have something film funky that you wanna send along, then you can do that using that address. And speaking of the PO Box, I haven't opened some stuff on camera in a while, um, just because I've been so busy, but I have a couple of little things that I wanna show off. I've had a couple of boxes come to me recently. Um, one came to me courtesy of Alyssa, and they sent me 
several boxes of Fuji Acros 100, which is a very nice black and white film that I have only shot a couple of times because it's so expensive, but super nice. Also an expired Fuji 160 NPS which is an older color negative film, which expired in 2005. Also some hand rolled Vision 3 motion picture film stocks, which is great for people out there who are trying to um, have a solution to being able to shoot color film in these difficult times where it's expensive to do. A lot of people are bulk rolling motion picture film and as long as you're either developing it yourself at home or taking it to a lab that has the ability to handle this stuff, then you can do that and you can get a lot of rolls out of a very big roll of 35 millimeter movie film. And also, Alyssa rolled down a little bit of Kodak uh, Ektachrome film from a 35 millimeter movie roll as well. If you have the money to upfront buy like a five or $600 roll of 35 millimeter Ektachrome in the movie format, which is like 400 feet, then that's a good way to get a lot of Ektachrome and roll it down so you can shoot slide film for a very long time. It's like 80 rolls or something like that if you do them 36 exposure, but. There's also a couple rolls of Fuji Superior 800, which is not like publicly available anymore, but Fuji puts this stuff into their 800 ISO disposable cameras. So, you know, if you really want that stuff, you can buy those disposables. Uh, carefully open them up because there's electronic flash components in those things, which can be dangerous and give you a shock but you can take out the film, which is still in these little unbranded like white canisters. And there was another little box a few weeks ago from Chris who sent me two rolls of Plus X Kodak black and white film in medium format. Plus X is a black and white film that has been discontinued for quite a while now. And I've only ever shot some in Super 8 as well as a little bit in 35 millimeter like cut down from a big movie roll. But Chris was super kind to send me two rolls of it in medium format that expired in 2011, but have been well stored. So I'm really looking forward to shooting those. Also, Tony from over on my Patreon is a very, very big contributor to the channel. And I can't thank Tony enough for the support that he has sent along uh, in terms of some Fuji pack film stuff and very precious sorts of things like that that are all mostly in the fridge at the moment that I didn't want to pull out uh, just to show off. But Tony, uh, thank you so much. I've thanked you before, but sending pack film and any, you know, cameras and stuff like that are insane to see. Thank you to everybody who supports this stuff or watches this stuff or has ever sent something along or thought about sending something along and didn't get around to it. Doesn't matter. It's all so, so appreciated. And it's such an incredible amount of generosity that I've received just for doing these videos. So I hope that people are enjoying these videos and learning from it and uh, I will continue to do them every once in a while. So thank you so much and I'll see you soon.